Hello everybody and welcome again to this another week of our online lectures on multimedia and this week we'll be studying video compression principles. So the contents is you know more or less like this we'll see you know overview of video compressions in general and uh, mostly focus on you know MPEG video compression and then uh, we will also see something on you know advanced video compression uh, that include AVC that is advanced video coding and ACVC that is high efficiency video coding. In short, we also say A is dot two six four and A is dot you know two six five. And why we use audio compression uh, and video compressions? Uh, I explained this slide in you know, earlier when we started audio compression, so no need to repeat that again. Video compression, uh, see uh, that why and how this this is useful and and i'm sure that you you are already familiar this sort of idea so see here that you know mpeg right in let's say let's say we we, we see the capacity of mpeg mpeg uh, as i told you is moving picture expert group this is an standardizations group uh, and they uh, worked very much you know on audio video and also system sound so now we already talked on MPEG audio. Now we will be talking on video. So see that uh, if we have, let's say, uncompressed, you know, data. For example, so let's say uh, where the frame size is 1280 by 720 pixels. So that means, you know, kind of, you know, this kind of pixels, right? Let's say in horizontally we have, you know, 1280 pixels and the image height or the frame height more appropriately is 720 pixels and and what is video video is basically you know the sequence of frames right it's, it's nothing other than that a sequence a kind of sequence of images and 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 there are you know you know let's say 30 frames per second and if 30 frames per second and and each frame size is this one and if we have uncompressed you know video kind of these and you know for such a video for five minute video we need almost 23 gigabyte uh, stories so see for five minute video we need 23 gigabyte video can you imagine but if we just you know on this uncompressed video if we apply let's say mpeg you know to in a kind of you know uh, for some sort of mpeg compression and uh, just a little bit you know reduce let's say resolution is a little bit reduced a 720 you know and by 486 and we keep the same frame rate and with this compression the space now become you know 232 megabyte only so see 100 times you know reduction compressions happening and this is happening and that's the you know that's the need and that's the importance the why we need video compression so first standard you know that was finalized for video compression was mpeg1 for interactive video on cd and for digital audio broadca broadcasting but we are talking about here you know video so video compression you know what is the basic idea so if you see the video is basically the sequence of some image see for examples here these these players that some action is doing and 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 you know these are some you know consecutive frames you know what we see you know you know over over the time but definitely from here to here is 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 just you know few milliseconds not even seconds because at every second there are generally 30 20 you know frames frames right so that's why you know in one second there are 30 you know such kind of you know frames so definitely you know you know if we just see every frames if we just you know keep every frame one by one then we will see these kind of things right where we can closely see and when this video replay definitely quickly replayed you know uh, before our eyes so we can't you know differentiate between a still image and the moving you know picture so ultimately what we are you know saying this video is basically temporal combinations of frames what is temporal temporal means you know time right temporal combinations of frames and each frame can be considered as an image right for example like 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 this one 
let's say this image this single image or let's say this single image so this single image is ultimately is, is kind of we can say this is a kind of jpeg image right kind of you know one single image is kind of jpeg image and definitely you know if we have one you know image you know if we think about only one image one jpeg image one jpeg image itself can be compressed right as you as you know that from our image compression using jpeg compression that one image itself we can compress and and there you know because that how this you know the pixels are you know distributed pixels are there and we use some dct compression techniques then we, we used that one right so for when we, we, we talk about just on a single image that compression is still possible but when you know see that you know we, we generally the frame rate of video is very large right you know usually greater than 15 frames per second even 20 even 30 frames per second even 60 frames per second right so where you know just you know the camera parameters for example you know, when you take a video we usually don't change focal length camera positions viewing angle you know we, we do not change rapidly from frame to frames right so what we can see that in consecutive frames from this frame to this frame the most of the you know things are almost equal so some object might move for example here hand little move maybe ball or this you know bat might be moving towards so what we can do is basically we can exploit the temporal redundancy what does it mean temporal redundancy that's a redundancy you, you know the word redundancy redundancy means access ex access right access additional ad additional 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 information so so that means this frame to this frame this frame to this frame you know there are some you know large you know part of this for example from this frame to this frame a very large part between these two frames are same so or we can say you know the same information are repeated so this is kind of excess information additional information we don't need we can just keep the same information once and the new information we can just you know consider so so that is called redundancy some additional information and then in, in, when we look you know irrespective of time so uh, more more appropriately this is let's say let's see example example of you know temporal redundancy is like that for example let's say these two are you know two consecutive frames so in these two consecutive frames you see most of the things are equal most of the contents are equal these are equal these are equal the same information right only things happen this person he was perhaps walking from here and he just little from from earlier he was like here like and now it's little bit you know forward and he comes here right so this is only the differences now how about i mean uh, let's say that we just you know transmit this information or we keep only you know we keep this information but we don't you know send this information this image we only transmit this frame but we don't transmit this frame rather what we do we just send the difference information only this new information we can you know keep or we can preserve we can transmit so add that if we do this way so that means we don't need to you know store this whole you know image right so frame by frame we can compare and then we can keep some frame and with reference with that frame the other frame we can regenerate it we can remake so that's the idea of you know temporal redundancy so we can exploit we can use the temporal redundancy you know to have you know our video compressed so and interestingly you know temporal redundancy is often very significant yeah so for example not every frame of the video needs to be coded independently for examples here let's say you know let's say this is a jpeg image we can just you know code and we can preserve but we don't need to code this one right because we already have this one and most of the information in this frame are similar okay so we just do some difference between the current frame and the other frame in the sequence okay so redundancy between them is really great enough so what we do for examples you know think about from information theoretic perspectives let's say one one frame is this let's say this is frame number one and let's say this is frame number two right so 
we just transmit this information as it is uh, for example like a jpeg image or simply we just you know compress like jpeg image and so it is as it is we keep as it is now how about the next frame next frame what we do is let's say we just do two minus one so when we you know we send a frame but this frame basically a difference image we can say this is a difference difference image why i'm saying difference image because we are just you know having pixel by pixel differences let's say for this time being okay so this is the difference image two minus one now when you do the differences so what will happen most of the pixel will be zeros or at exactly very low values zero one something 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 and just few pixels maybe in this region maybe in this region in this region maybe some values will be like you know a lot of changes maybe maybe 23 maybe 100 something something right and or most of the because this is a difference image so this is basically 2 minus 1 2 minus 1 so most of the values will be 0 and because most of the values will be 0 if we do some you know run length coding or something then means this image will be reduced a lot compared to this one right so this image will be reduced a lot so that's the idea that how we can apply you know the we can utilize the redundancy and then you know we can compress the video but definitely as it looks very simple that we just you know have pixel by pixel differences but this is not very effective you know this is basically ineffective for high compression ratio we do some sort of other mechanisms so and as i told you the main causes of the differences between the frames basically camera and object motion okay now definitely this motion you know from image from when we go from this image when you go from this image to this image let's say you know there was there is there was this image is something like okay but in this image some suddenly an object might appear right so this kind of object so you know so this motion that that in which direction some object is moving so that kind of motion compensation we need to do and accordingly we say video compression based on motion compensation okay in mpeg1 you know so uh, if we if we think about the video we, we saw the audio if we think about the video is basically adopts you know kinds of you know this kind of you know digital tv format and sometimes we say this is kind of you know source input format you don't need to know that what is this digital tv format it is some sort of format so mpeg1 basically you know it borrows some concept from this you know uh, you know television signal formatting and the best known for you know source input format this is kind of format or we say sif format sif format and mpeg1 supports only non interlaced video it doesn't you know support interlaced video uh, if you remember that what is interlaced and what is non interlaced and the picture resolution is actually you know very low in fact you see 352 by 240 you know image size for ntsc video you know why are you talking about the ntsc if you remember that i talked about ntsc because it's you know national television eastern committee because initially the mpeg1 was targeted for digital tv and it used you know 30 frames per second it also used 352 by 288 for pal video and you know the pal is also television signal phase alternative alternating line video and in 25 frames per second and it use, uses this kind of you know, chroma subsampling so this is very much you know some you know kind of description of features so how mpeg1 works in mpeg1 you know uh, if you remember that you know uh, the video means a sequence of frames right frame one frame two frame three and in this way okay so mpeg so what what it does is is basically you know designate and make some specific you know kind of frames for example in mpeg some frames are called i frame and some frames are called p frame and some frames are called b frame and some frames are called d frames so there are four different kinds of frame so i frame uh, it's coming from intracode frame and p coming from predictive b coming from bidirectional 
and D coming from DC coded frame. Okay. So what is I frame? I frame is kind of you know self-contained you know JPEG encoded image. For example, this is I mean this image, this frame. Let's say if this is an I frame, this I frame is you know a standalone frame. It this frame doesn't depend on any other frame. This is also we can say this is the reference frame. Okay. So that means you know periodically you know MPEG what is it does is periodically it sends an iframe and then some other frame and then again iframe and then some other frame and then again iframe okay so this iframe you know doesn't depend on any other frame so that means it can be decoded encoded just independently okay and but other frame you know will constitute will recover other frame with reference to this iframe so that's why iframe basically reference frame so you can think about like this you know let's if you go back here for example if you think about this is i frame or reference frame then and then this is a difference frame maybe this is not i frame so but this frame can be generated you know with reference to this frame so that's why we need to periodically you know uh, send and periodically insert some sort of reference frame so because you know periodically let's say some other frame and then i frame so the other frame can be you know um, can be constructed from iframe so that's the idea what is iframe so not only iframe the mpeg also have you know p frame that's called you know predictive frames so that is block by block differences with preceding p or iframe okay let's think about more appropriate like that okay so for example like this okay now let's let's how about this one is kind of this kind of things let's say this is an iframe and then you have one b frame two b frame and then again you have p frame and then b frame b frame and then again i frame like this okay so this is kind of that that how it works okay so independent frames that is not related to any other frame and they are present regular at regular intervals this i frame you see one i frame and then other i frame something like that and the p frame is interesting uh, because it's related to preceding i frame or p frame that means you see this is an i frame I forget about this one right now but think about this p frame this p frame can be you know generated can be constructed can be recovered you know from i frame or p frame so generally i can i can draw here like this one kind of things let's say this one is one i frame i frame and let's say this one is you know maybe white color this one is b frame and let's say i have now p frame and let's say again we have b frame okay and let's say now we have again one p frame and then let's say again we have some b frame and then again we have you know let's say i frame okay this is i frame so so you see this one is we can say this one is p frame this is p frame and all other are actually b frame let's say this is b frame b frame b frame b frame b frame b frame so so this i frame is original image okay this original frame there is no compromise with this one this i frame is the original image original jpeg frame you can say jpeg frame jpeg frame and then you know this p frame is also constructed with some references with references this i frame you see so that means you know we we, we don't you know sense you know something like you know how to recover this frame let's say you know let's say we transmit i frame this is a complete reference frame this is also a complete reference frame we can say this p is a semi reference frame so this p frame we can construct this p frame from this i frame okay and how about this you know this you know this p frame this p frame can be constructed from this p frame okay this p frame can be constructed from this p frame so it is also it is perhaps it is also you know these p frames maybe it is also possible to construct from this i frame 
and this p frame okay this is also possible from this p frame but what whatever this p frame we will construct from previous p frame or i frame okay so that is that is the simple thing and how about this i frame this i frame is again independent but how about this you know you know i don't know maybe there's red color how about this b frame this b frame will construct from this i frame this b frame construct from this i frame how about this b frame this b frame is constructed from this p frame in fact it is this b frame is let's say I, I just make it simple like like this one this b frame is called bidirectional frame why it is bidirectional bidirectional because this b frame not only depends on this i frame it also depends on this p frame similarly this b frame is also depends on this p frame and also depends on this i frame so to construct this b frame we need both p frame and i frame so similarly to construct this b frame we need this p frame or this p frame so you see so, so this b frame sandwich between these two p frame so that's why you know this b frame depends on this one and this one and how about this you know how about this b frame this b frame depends on this p, p frame and this i frame so this is how you know you know the missing frames we can you know regenerate so so for to make the you know consistency to keep the track of our video we regularly transmit some we regularly transmit some i frame and then you know with reference to this i frame we also construct some p frame and then you know with reference to both i and this p frame both i and this p frame we you know do some you know bidirectional frames so these bidirectional frames to construct this bidirection these are missing frames right we only send this i frame and 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 this i frame as an independent frames this independent frames and this p frames we send in reference to this i frames now also we send you know this you know b frames this is kind of differences that's constitute both this p frame and this i frame so this is how we make it for example here look for example let's say this is our original you know frame so we transmit this i as a very mass this this one we also you know transmit this one this is i frame and this p frame uh, we also transmit this p frame you know but you know we keep some you know references you know in reference with you know maybe this p frame depends on this i frame and maybe with this you know this i frame and other frame we basically don't transmit rather we gen regenerate this b frame with respect to this you know b frame and b frame so b frame how can we make this b frame using this i frame and this p frame and this b frame from here and here how about this b frame from this b frame and this i frame and in this way so this is you know how it actually you know it looks like okay but think about that i mean definitely you know when we see you know our encoder there is some differences let's say this is our encoder this is our encoder mpeg encoder so the order in which we are you know supplying the you know video for example this is one frame second frame second frame but this output order is very different why because you know for example so let's think about that you know we have a frame frame one two three four five six seven up to 13 yeah, okay so we have a video we have a video of 13 frames frame one to frame 13 okay frame one to frame 13 so this is that one but we'll consider this one as an iframe right if we consider this one as iframe and and let's say if we consider you know this one uh, next two is is let's say you know b frame so and the next one is p frame and the next two is b frame and the next is p frame and the next two is b frame and the next one is p frame and the next two is b frame and the next one is again i frame if we think if we designate our frame in this way now now what will be the encode output so definitely the very first things it should come is it should come is definitely the 
you know the encoder output will be the very first one is i frame but the next one will be p frame because this p frame because we cannot we don't know this b we cannot you know generate this you know b frame without this p frame so that's why you know after this is independent after that we constitute we construct this p frame and then we constitute bt and b3 after that we constitute you know p7 and then we have b5 and b6 after that we construct you know you know this frame and then you know uh, uh, sorry this one and then we construct this one and this one so see so the very first one is this frame is i frame that's fine and the next is p frame because you know because you know to to calculate this b frame we need this p frame so that's why the very first thing is this i frame and then this p frame and then we have you know this p7 and then this one and then this one and then we have this one and then we have this one and then b9 and then this i frame we should have and then this one and then this one so the order of the original image is basically changed as the output of the encoder so this is the output of the encoder the order of the encoder is like this so it was 1 4 2 3 7 you know 5 6 10 in this way but definitely the display order that when we decode will get written back to the our original order otherwise the display will be very different okay so so that's why you know encoder you know to to calculate this kind of you know frames and ordering reordering the encoder sometimes take you know minutes or hours to do the encoding but decoder definitely needs to be fast because you know when we look at the video we can't wait for you know to calculate the video or those kind of things now think i mean this actually the magic thing is this this iframe if this iframe is missing for example let's say this iframe suddenly missing so that means what if we miss this iframe maybe you know some very strange picture will be coming because we we we, we, we don't keep the track of the iframe anymore and some very you know peculiar you know some another kind of strange reference frame might be coming and if we have the different you know reference you know frame definitely the subsequent pictures will be different so again we know we need i frame and we have to wait until the you know the correct reference frames comes so sometimes when you look at the video sometimes we can see that video suddenly you know some very peculiar you know some frames comes and then again after some times you know it 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 uh, it again become okay right so so what happens i mean if you if you really you know miss some iframe that how this video looks like you know see you know here i have a you know very small video clips for you and i will play you can also look at you know this video you know this video one you can see this one this link and there you can see this you know video so i'm not sure that i'm just waiting just just for a second that to see this one is coming or not so uh, actually it's not coming here so you can just go and check that what happens you know if missing iframes you know occurs okay so mpeg1 you know when we look at the system perspectives you know how it works is like this one that you know we have an audio signal and we have video signal the audio signal goes to the audio encoder and video signal goes to the video encoder to maintain the you know you know time you know, to maintain the timing between this one and synchronization and others so we have to have time stampings and for that we need a clock so this clock is kind of you know 90 kilohertz you know clock signals that maintain the time stampings and synchronizations and there is a multiplexer it you know based on our timing and sequences and, and algorithms it just you know mix up this audio and video and then finally the stream of this mpeg you know video comes up here this is the output signals so generally you know 1.5 mbps is the typical data rate in mpeg1 so out of out of it you know 1.2 mbps is basically introduced for coded video and 256 kbps for stereo video mpeg2 is similar to mpeg1 but it developed for digital tv 
the difference is you know it's supported into last video and D frames are not supported and if you see that you know we mentioned that in MPEG you know there are another kinds of frames called you know D frame called DC frames this is used basically for block averages when we do some fast forwarding so at that time we need that kind of things and p frame predictive frame is block by block differences with the preceding i frame or p frames okay so p frame you know p frame is let's say if it is a p frame so it it means this frame is kind of you know let's say what is the differences between this block so not pixel by pixel that what is the difference in this block and this block so this block size is 8 by 8 block size so from one frame to another frame so that's why it's a block by block differences and bidirectional differences is differences between simple i frame or p frame i explained before so the block size in mpeg1 is 8 by 8 but in mpeg2 the block size is 10 by 10 and it also supports higher resolution and it has different kind of you know profile profile means you know what kind of data rate what kind of frame rates so different kinds of combinations you know this mpeg2 supports so for example let's say here is an example let's say hdtv you can consider the high definition tv the resolution is let's say 1920 2018 and 24 bits per pixels you know and if we have 60 frame per seconds so if you calculate the data rate it will be uncompressed data rate will be 2986 you know mbps and you know that how to calculate you know this one right so for example 190 20 1920 multiplied by 1080 this is one you know single frame size and for each so that means that means this number of pixels for each pixels we allocate 24 bits you know to represent the data maybe color or maybe the level or whatever it seems rgb color and we have you know 60 frames per second so if we just you know multiply these ones so it will be kind of approximately 2986 mbps you can check it at home but if we do the mpeg you know compression mpeg2 compression then the compressed video side will be around 25 to 34 mbps for television signals we have you know simple 720 by 576 so what does it mean actually 720 by 576 or 1920 by 1080 if you remember this means that how many pixels are there horizontally and how many pixels are there vertically that means this is image height and this is image width okay so ultimately this tv signal is takes you know if you don't compress there's around 498 mbps but if you compress then it becomes three to six mbps so you see that the power of mpeg2 compression now mpeg4 is basically you know it's not block based or frame based coding like mpeg1 and mpeg2 it's kind of you know object based coding approach so object based coding coding means from the frame we detect the object and then we manipulate that object so that we say content based manipulation it basically started you know for the applications of you know portable applications like you know video phones and or originally targeted for low bitrate applications so i would say that you know mp4 is not really data compression it's actually much more than that you know for examples think about here this kind of you know mpeg4 you know many manipulations and processing for example let's say here is a scene segmentation we, we just let's say we we did some sort of you know segmented things and we have let's say banana and here a grab and some juice and what you do is kind of let's say we just transmit to mpeg encoder and let's say for this one this is a separate you know we can say separate plane video plane and object plane video object plane let's say for the grab and then you have the banana like this one right now what we can do and let's say some sort of content based manipulations for example you know let's say we keep this object as it is 
and and for this object we just in enlarge and and for this object we just delete and and then this object we can insert so this sort of in and you see the output is kind of content based manipulation so this can be done in mpeg4 so there are some other kind of you know functionalities the very most important functionalities that we can see in mpeg4 is kind of this you know content based multimedia access tools and and some other kind of i don't know maybe 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 temporal random access you can you know access in anywhere and coding efficiency improved also some more you know robust to errors that means less error happen uh, if even though you just communicate uh, in a very harsh environment still you know it can communicate well and scalability so you can you know try to search what this means at home and and see uh, that to sharpen your understanding on more but i just gave you a basic idea so overall the mpeg standards is mpeg1 is for intermediate data rates and you know it was for 1.5 mbps or something mpeg2 for high data rate applications for example around 25 mbps now mpeg3 there was mpeg3 for hdtv compression but later on it was marsh to mpeg2 and mpeg4 as i explained usually for low data rate applications for example around 64 kbps okay now uh, let's talk something on um, this H.264 and H.265 and as I said in the beginning that uh, this is somehow we consider an advanced as advanced video coding and also this one is very advanced that is high efficiency video coding so this one is started you know firstly maybe around 2003-4 and it, the latest version is you know 2019 and this one started around 2013 or 14 and um, its latest version is also 2019 so these are very uh, useful uh, especially this you know age.264 uh, is still being used you know by by many of the softwares and companies industry so we'll be coming here uh, but uh, let's see you know some uh, features or some description general descriptions on age.264 this is basically a block oriented you know motion compensated integer dct coding and you know what is block oriented it means it's simply block by block and um uh, so what is this let's i talk that you already know that how uh, frame interpolation works so that is you know for examples let's say you know the video is basically the sequence of frames right and let's say this is a frame at t minus one at t minus one time in stand and this is the uh, next frame at t and this is the next frame t plus one and this is the next frame t plus two this is the you know some consecutive frames right and as you all as you already know that we don't send all the frames right for example you know let's say we send this frame and we don't send the next frame and then let's say we send next frame and we don't send the next frame and we send the next frame right and in the receiver side what we do basically we use you know this frame and this frame to generate this frame right so this is called you know frame interpolation um, that the missing frame not only the missing frames I mean the frame that we didn't send or we can consider that this one as I frame and and then maybe this one as a P frame so using I frame and P frame we uh, constitute or we recover the frame I know you know maybe B frame we say maybe B frame right as as you know this so and how we do that uh, I told you this is some techniques called motion compensation because it we see that how the object or you know some point is basically you know moving towards a particular directions for example in this scenario we can see that this object or let's say this picture itself is moving towards these directions or whatever it is so if we just you know see this one and this one then you know we can um, estimate the motion of this object and accordingly you know we will generate you know this object so based on this is we say that I mean technique is motion compensation technique of course we are not studying how the motion compensation technique itself works so that is a, a different you know things 
uh, for our multimedia stuffs you know we don't need to know those things we just know that you know we, we use motion compensation to, to generate this one so this is basically you know we say you know frame interpolation that means you know one frame to another frame or maybe from i frame you know to next b frame how we generate those and uh, as i said that is basically mostly commonly used format for the recording compensation and distribution of the video content and you know typically you know you know more than 90 percent video industry developers they use you know this avc technique and compared to mpeg2 it basically achieves 50 percent compression it's also provide the resolution up to 4k um, so you, you know these things i explained in details so when you do this you know frame interpolations uh, for example you know using uh, i frame and let's say uh, we, we, we like to generate you know let's say p frame something okay uh, we say p slice sometimes um, here and i will you will see that what is mean by slice a little later uh, in h.265 concepts but let's say you know for this time being it's somehow another you know frame or something uh, anyway so this uh, there are you know two types of blocks uh, we use here in this h.264 one is macro block or m type block and another is 8 by 8 uh, types block so in macro block that is our m type block you know the block size even it might be you know 16 by 16 so uh, so for, for example think about that in a in a particular frame and you know the frame means we can understand it is a jpeg frame or something so let's say jpeg frame jpeg image so here maybe large area maybe maybe let's say a very large area or maybe large in you know, a very you know greater area big area maybe you know the similar values are there that means more smooth version right more smooth area so at the time maybe if we know one pixel values so maybe other pixel values are similar in that area so in that kind of situations you know we can use this large you know values like 16 by 16 you know size but definitely you know this 16 by 16 block we can you know sometimes also divide uh, some smaller parts for example we can consider 8 by 16 8 by 16 so that means this 16 by 16 we can divide like in this way this is vertical divisions we can also like horizontal divisions. that means this one and this one that is 16 by 8 and 16 by 8 so this one is 16 pixels you know height and 16 pixel width so the 16 by 16 can be you know implemented in you know 8 by 16 and 8 by 16 in this configuration or in this configuration or maybe four 8 by 8 configurations so whatever it is it is some sort of you know segmentations of macro block while we do the motion compensation so for example since that that's we have the big image so what we do each block let's say this is a block right 8 by 8 or 16 by 16 so we'll see that what is the situation in this block and what is the situation uh, in the next frame in this block okay in the next from this 8 by 8 block so we try to see the differences between this block and this block in this way we block by block we do this motion compensation so whatever and then uh, if the image is somewhere is you know maybe many changes happens or maybe uh, very details we like to capture so at the time our block size should be smaller so we can think of eight by eight block size and that eight by eight block size even uh, can be implemented in different you know configurations for example maybe four by eight four by eight or eight by four eight by four there there are two eight by four right or two four by eight or four four by four this kind of segmentation we do or we can say partition now this is you know a little different things but think about that we are sending let's say a particular frame okay let's say maybe maybe i frame itself okay or p frame itself whatever it is let's say i frame itself generally now this frame we can think that this is basically a jpeg image right and when we send a iframe definitely you know this is very important because based on this frame the other frames will be generated we can you know roughly you know say this kind of things now even within a single frame we can actually you know 
compress our uh, information and you know the jpeg how the compression done but forget about that jpeg you know compression strategy even there are so many other strategy that uh, actually this h.264 you know perform so for examples you know think like that let's say this is a four by four i mean a four by four block we can think that uh, this is this four by four block coming from a you know big image of course you can think of just a four by four block we are considering and let's say this is you know uh, we can say that let's say this is a b c d e f g h i j k l right so we can designate you know the pixel level in this way this is a four by four block and then you know this one a this one b this one c this one d and in this way h and so these are basically the neighboring pixels right so that means you know this is a a, a four by four block and this is you know another you know this is basically this a is basically the neighboring pixel from an from neighboring you know block right so this is basically part of you know other other block we can think in this way now how we can actually compensate see maybe we can assume that maybe we don't need to send all of these pixels information rather what we can do maybe we can copy the same a you know over the same you know here right or maybe we can copy that what is the pixel information in m pixels from this another block maybe in this block and and the same values we can copy so there are different kinds of we say this is basically we say you know um, with different modes okay with a different modes of prediction and these are the directions of those modes. let's say we explain a little bit here this is you know better so we can use you know um you know here we are you know there are actually you know perhaps nine mode that is mode zero to mode eight uh, mod actually you know mod right you know it's, it's a mod zero to mod eight and here some mods are we are showing let's say vertical mod mod this mod zero so it means that whatever the pixels a we will just copy the same pixel values here 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 and here similarly the b pixel values will be used by the next you know four pixels or you know we can use horizontal mode so that is we'll copy the same values that is this is this is an ith pixel j k and l pixel and these four pixels will be the same values as of i or you know we can use like you know diagonal down left so this is diagonal going down and the left diagonal down down right or vertical right so there are different kinds of modes of predictions that we can use so for example you know if i go here see so what we are meaning for example let's say i'm just you know talking this mode three so this is the same i just copied here so this one it says let's say you know this pixels values is five okay and let's say this pixel values is six this pixel values is let's say you know maybe 10 this pixel values may be uh, uh, 14 this pixel values may be 46 this value may be 5 this is maybe 7 this is maybe you know something like 100 okay a very interesting thing is we can basically copy see if we use diagonal down left mod so that means you know these values will be 6 okay so these pixel values we are just you know talking about these four by four pixels here four by four you know block this four by four block and uh and this six basically copying from these pixel values right if we if we adopt this diagonal down left and then you know this 10 will be copied here and here this 14 will be copied here 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 this 46 will be copied here 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 and this five will be copied here, here, and here. This seven will be copied here and here. This hundred will be copied just here. So you see, this is very easy. So once we have these, you know, values, uh, then we automatically have, you know, these values. So what it means, uh, uh, it, we don't need to send this information. Just we only need to say that hey, we are using, you know, mod three. So this is this is one way that how within a frame we can basically compressed our image a lot 
because we are not sending this information rather we will be copying these things and and it is you know in which more mod we will be used either horizontal mod or dc mod or down right vertical right or vertical mod it depends on the algorithms or that how our human vision works or depending on the natures of the so that is a different things so now i hope that you understand how this is called intra frame prediction that means within a single frame when we are sending a single frame like this you know like a single frame that this frame you know within this frame we don't need to even send all this information right because in the receiver side we first generate this information using this uh, kind of technique and then we also generate this information using its interpolation i mean uh, the i mean intra frame techniques and then we perform inter inter frame that means you know this using this frame and that frame we'll use this frame so this is from when one from one frame we are generating another frame that is called you know frame interpolation or inter frame interpolations and when within within the frame itself this is called intra you know this is called intra frame prediction now we use 4 by 4 when we need you know significant details that means that you are within a small area but we can also use you know large smooth area right for example you know in not only 4 by 4 we can basically construct you know 16 by 16 right 16 because at that time we don't need to send you know lots of IP because six for 16 by 16 pixel we don't need to send information uh, but definitely at that time this neighboring would should also be 16 uh, by 16 from a to up to you know 16 go and from i to j so you go 16 pixels then we can use you know this kind of you know diagrams so this is you know one way that how this h.264 achieves better compression okay now we'll not talk you know, more on that now how about you know here uh, h.265 this is high efficiency video coding you know this is basically two two key issues uh, the improvement uh, compared to h.264 one is this video resolution increase up to 8k and it's also uh, introduced you know parallel processing architecture for comp high you know for high performance computation so these are some you know comparison you can read uh, for example this is in the key improvement then you have that you know support of 8k resolution you know bit that is frame rate that how fast your video can be supported and how fast the encoding times can be done and there are various other kind of you know properties and these are the application area so you see that is dot 264 that is abc you know blu ray is dvr you know and streaming services for example youtube itunes is still you know they use you know this abc but you know age dot two six five is comparatively new uh, so it's not supported you know by you know many uh, recent and advanced you know maybe uh, the industry but it is being adopted definitely so uh, the uh, let's uh, i talk uh, something on that how the parallel processing works in h dot you know six uh, 265 so um, in h.265 you know for example in the macro block that is 16 by 16 macro block 16 by 16 macro block or let's say 8 by 8 types in a block so in here in uh, this 265 we use the concept called CTU this is also you know kind of block basically this is 64 by 64 you know block you know size okay and we so this is called CTU now within this you know CTU that is um, you know coding tree unit we say coding tree unit okay now within one CTU you know there are definitely color information as well as brightness information whatever so we are not talking on that so there are some concept let's say you know parallel processing concepts one is slice slice concept and another is you know called tile concept and we also have thread or wave front concept now let's say slice concept now slice concept is says that uh, let's say this is a you know frame now this single frame we you know divided into some slice for example this is slice one this is slice two this is slice n now when you consider the slice n you can basically um you know you can design the way you want okay uh, so let's say this is a slice this is one slice but definitely it cannot be like this it should be like you know some sort of 
you know this kind of line right some straight line not i mean it's or some uh, how to say that you know some parallel line uh, of this horizontal parallel line or this vertical parallel line because the block length is always something like you know this either horizontal parallel or vertical parallel right so because it is square 64 by 64 so we cannot have like this so rather what we can do let's say maybe this is one slice okay also you may consider the slice maybe you know look like that maybe 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 this is you know another slice okay so this can be a slice okay or but definitely it should be consecutive so in this way consecutive or so or in this direction consecutive so something like that so you cannot broke right you cannot break the you know the slice should be continuous right so this is what it means so this is the slice and then what you do let's say you uh, start processing you know uh, for example you do start some encoding or decoding whatever you do so you can you can do some coding you know encoding or some operation or some processing image processing or so pixel processing video processing on let's say in this unit or uh, sub so this is block zero let's say ctu zero let's say this very this one the beginning one and uh, then you cannot uh, use parallel processing so that means the processing at the same times uh, on another CTU in the same slice rather you know you can use uh, maybe you know maybe this one and this one together because they this you know CTU and this CTU coming from the different slice and the reason is you know perhaps you know this CTU is somehow dependent on this neighboring CTU this is the concept but perhaps you know this CTU has no relation with this CTU so we can independently process this CTU and you know the CTU is important uh, because you know uh, you know when you have uh, some relationship between this CPU this CTU and this CTU maybe you know maybe some because of some uh, interpredictions or maybe because of some framing references we need each others to generate each other information but perhaps you know this CTU and this CTU has no relation so that's why we roughly say that you know we can choose any CTU from this slice and any CTU from this slice or maybe this is let's say and, 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 and let's say maybe this is you know another you know slice so maybe then we can choose you know another you know CTU from this slice right the slice over three so then we can do some parallel processing so this is one you know idea that how parallel processing done and another idea is let's say tile concept you can rather you know consider okay this is this four CTU you know constitute one tile this four CTU constitute one tile and this is another tile and then what you do you can basically you know parallel process between tile one and tile two CTU and in the same way but we can't we can't you know you know do the parallel processing between this CTU and this CTU because they are coming from the same tile then you also have the concepts of you know thread concept this is like CPU concept right that for example that let's say this CTU you know this in this line they consider thread 1 this is thread 2 this is thread 3 this is thread 4 what we can do basically we can take CTU from thread 1 and at the same time we can take you know see any an, another CTU from thread 2 and we can do some parallel processing so these are you know different kinds of you know concepts of parallel processing that you know are used here okay now this is called from computational perspectives and from compression perspectives you know uh, H.265 use 35 different modes of for intra frame predictions that is within the same frame you know it achieves different kinds of direction that means every possible you know uh, redundancy you know we exploit here and this is from mode 0 to mode 34 okay uh, so mode 1 is simple DC so that means you just do average for example here if you go this is more for example in age.264 if you use mod 2 that is DC so that means in this mod you basically you know take values A, B, C, D, I, J, K, L and then you make average of all of these pixels and you use the same values here right so this is called DC operation you are just taking average if I just go back for example here so you can um, imagine that what we mean by this you know DC1 you can easily understand for example if we have you know these values let's say 4 these values let's say 3 these values 5 this is 6 let's say this is 7 this is 8 this is 7 maybe this is 8 um, so then what so the total you know 
4 plus 4 plus 3 is 7 plus 5 is 12 18 25 and then 43 50 58 right so then you just take the 58 divided by 8 so maybe you know seven point something right so then this seven point something basically use a seven point something seven point something seven point something seven point something so you are using the average values of those ones so this is called dc mode that is you know just averaging okay also uh, this uh, you know so these two six in h.265 we have you know various modes so that means you know depending on the picture depending on the you know scenario scene of the object or scene of the nature so whatever uh, we can utilize any modes okay uh, the idea is maybe you know in these directions we might have you know more compression savings than these directions so depending on the needs and depending on the characteristics we can choose the mode okay so so this is uh, the idea that how you know this you know sorts of you know interframe predictions works okay so uh, that's it uh, you know some sort of you know idea that what we had you know regarding uh, you know, video compression okay so i don't know if we go back like this okay so uh this is the idea right we we had you know uh, these things and these things we just you know completed so uh, uh so you know the next week is exam uh perhaps you know the time you would see this video i already posted in blackboard so have good exam